Hello, welcome back to part two of this build, and we're going to see this one through to the end in this uh, this episode. So, what we're doing here is about to do the painting, and I'm still trialling this uh, Mr. Colour um, version of Dunkel Grey, Dunkel Grau, even, uh, or Dark Grey, German Grey, Panzer Grey. And I'm also still um, using uh, my own mix using these colours here. So, you've got XF63 and XF8, and you can see they're all in the same ballpark. I'm not totally sure which one I like the most. I think I continued here using um, the Mr. Colour and then I just lightened some panels using my own mix of the Tamiya colours using the trusty lacquer thinners there. Um, I use Rapid or Mr. Leveling Thinner depending on how I feel really. If I want it to flash off quite quickly and not have any problem with it, then it will be the Rapid Thinner. Um, if I'm going to spray and leave it overnight, for instance, then it will most likely be the um, levelling thinner. So just showing you there, applying the um, paint colour to the turret. I'm also getting some requests on where I get these uh, circle templates from. And they really are, this one that I'm using here, the photo etch one, is a Royal model one, which is actually still available. I didn't realise that. Uh, someone in the comments did mention uh, Royal model, Royale model are still going, but they're direct from Italy. So you, you ha the, the website is out there. If you search for Royal model, it will be an Italian website. Uh, so that's what I'm using here. They did a number of them um, and they've got preset uh, sizes for kits that were out at that time. But it's dating around 2002, sort of. Um, era so it's quite dated and once we've got everything sprayed up it's time to put the wheels back on and get all of those glued up so as we've shown in the previous video that I've actually done it so that we can get these wheels off that's how I glued the running gear on so just getting those back in they only fit one way so they look like they're a bit loose but when they actually slot in then they are in and again a comment from the video before the um, part one of this series um, I didn't realise, and I went on and had a look, and they were quite right. This is a rebox of the very old CMK uh, box uh, mould. It's um, it's quite an old kit. Now, I don't know the CMK kit that well. I built it a long time ago, back in um, the sort of early two thousands, and. It did get reboxed by Tamiya, but if you look on Scalemates, this will just show you an Academy new tool. But it's not. Um, it's utilising all of the parts from the CMK mould. My only slight thought that I've had is that some of it's been uh, redone slightly. So there's a bit of cast texture in areas and there's a bit more refinement, which I don't remember ever seeing on the CMK model, but it might have been there. I got I, I don't know it enough, like I said. So, again, this isn't really something I could recommend. I've started this kit um, on this series, but I think if you were going to do a 35T, um, I'd go for the Bronco one, personally, or get the CMK kit, which will, is you can pick up for, you know, around the sort of 10 to £15 pound mark, and it's this kit, for all intents and purposes. Whereas the FX Academy boxings are more 20 to 25. You're not getting anything extra. And the decals are probably better in the CMK kit, ironically. So there we go. Um, now what we do get here is link and length tracks. Now these are not perfect, but they are pretty good. Um, so all I do here is just sand up the joining areas. So, so where the, the tracks are going to meet. I get them sanded flush and make sure there's no seam lines or anything because that can foul things. And then we basically just line them up on um, a flat surface, push a few links together and run the Tamiya Extra Fin between them. So here I'm doing it with just two because they do actually spring about these little ones. But some um, other tanks, for instance, you might be able to get four or five in a row before you need to put the glue in. So just gluing that join up. Now you don't need to use the Tamiya Extra Fin here. And in fact, it could be... Um, actually uh, counterintuitive to do that. It might be better to use a thicker glue, like the Revel glue or the Tamiya white top glue. Something that's not designed the same way as the Tamiya Extra Fin under a capillary action. It might be better to go for something that's actually a little bit thicker and the glue does the binding, not, not necessarily melting the plastic together. 
just something to think about because as, as good as the Tamiya Extra Thin is, I do find the join is actually quite brittle when you move it, whereas those other glues tend to have a bit of movement to them and, and um, they don't tend to fall apart quite as much. So the thing to do is when you've got a run together like this, then you bring that run to a larger run um, and this is all whilst following the instructions. So there's a, it's not just grab the tracks off and put these links here, there and everywhere. With link and length, there's... Uh, you know, there's a way to go about it uh, because so it fits one way or another. Um, it won't just go anyway. Whereas if these are individual links, you'd put the whole run in and then you'd bring them in and around the running gear. So, for instance, here where I followed the instructions, uh, these this is where they fit. And as you can see, they conform to the way the running gear goes. So now I'm just going to let that set up, let the glue dry. So I'm just sort of pulling them onto the sprockets, both end. Uh, until they start to just bite and hold, that's the glue setting, and then leave it there for a little bit to take that shape up, and then you can take the um, track off of that once it's dry to let it really properly dry up overnight. You're basically using that shape there as a jig, and obviously turning it upside down means that gravity is in your favour. So once you've done that, you then work around the sprocket. So here we've got sprockets both sides, which is very unusual. Um, so I've got the run. These are all single links. And as you can see, the um, one of the links is the joins has, has come apart there. I didn't start using the different glue here, but like I said, it's, it's a way you can go. And it would avoid this. Should do anyway. Um, the other thing is these don't quite fit onto the teeth of the sprocket. And I'm a bit of a stickler for this with tracks. I like everything to sit exactly how it has to. So you do find, I, well, you'll find that I faff quite a lot more than is probably needed, um, especially when you go and weather it. Or I don't know whether you can see it, but, I, you know, as we've done all the way through, this is how I like to um, uh, do a track run on a tank. I like to get it all correct, you know, all the um, road wheels painted and the tracks painted separately, bring it all together and then weather it and not look to the weathering to hide stuff. I, I want it to be done right initially. So this is all I'm doing. To, to get that, you just faff about and you basically get the join all along the top run and we're going to leave the brake um, around the sprockets and on the top run. Now, where it's skipped here, what I actually think has happened, because these are now black, is I've taken all of these off and sprayed them. Um, so I sprayed them in rubber black, which is the colour I like to use for tracks, and now I'm actually gluing them up in the final point. Um, that is because these didn't work quite how I thought. Because they have to go around two sprockets and teeth don't quite fit, I've actually taken them all off, sprayed them individually, and then glued them in and around like individual links on the sprockets. So the run we've done below, as you can see in the right-hand corner just under my hand here, that is still set up as it was, so that's your one section. The top section running a lot, this is joining onto now from this rear sprocket, that's not fixed, and that is a whole run that goes along the return rollers. So that's already set up. So what you would do in a conventional way is you would use the whole of the running gear as a template. Um, as a as a mould to set the track when it's glued you would then if if possible take it off of the sprockets the idler etc with, with a break and you have your complete track run already glued up and then when it's painted you put it back on glue it down and it should bring it into exactly how it needs to be that's the principle behind it this one we've had to go a little bit differently on so we've just done that with the lower run and now you can see the benefit of that is we glue that into the rear part of the sprocket where it's a bit tight on this last road wheel i just run a little bit of um extra fin along there just to soften that join and then that will give you the uh play to get through to the front sprocket as well sometimes it can seem a little bit tight so you, you just play with it and um, move a bit here, there and everywhere and as you move along the track run you'll get tiny little bits of space that will go to joining up the, the gap at, at one end if you do have a gap. Uh, super glue is also useful here as well for a holding um, purpose which is what I've used there on the sprocket because it's under tension so your plastic glues won't hold under tension because they take a while to set uh, so super glue is very good just as a dab just to hold it so you don't have to keep your finger there, basically. And then um, you can use your Tamiya Extra Fin or your plastic glue in and around that, and that will um, seal up the join completely.
Now, after it's all on, I've decided now to glue the sprockets on. So that's the other thing. Uh, with all of this, you want to always leave the sprockets, sometimes the idlers, especially if they're sprockets, uh, teethed, toothed idlers, as it were, um, you need to you need to keep the toothed section, whether it's at the front, the back, whatever, that sprocket, you need to keep it movable because sometimes you need a bit of play to bring it forward here, there, and um, around the running gear. So I'm just test fitting now the mud guards or the side fenders, and uh, they are okay. So it's as I thought; they do slip in, they sort of snap in underneath. It's a bit of a faff, but you know they do work. This one's got a little bit of a twist at the end, but it, it comes out. And that's there now, the track done, and um, we're just going to do a bit of dry brushing with Mr. Colour Silver, so it's Mr. Colour 8, just to give some high points there, some polish still on the high points. Um, later on, after all the weathering, this actually disappears, so I, I add this back in with a graphite pencil, but there's numerous ways you can go about this. This is no by no means the best way. Um, is whatever works for you. You can use polishing compounds, you can use graphite powder or powders that um, a lot of the companies make, or graphite from a pencil, ground up or drawn on, whatever whatever you feel um, works. It's always best to try different things, I fancy. So setting up the uh, side fenders now, uh, I'm using cocktail sticks just to bring them level. They, they kind of wanted to sag diagonally downwards um, out towards the um, outside of the vehicle. So this is just propping them up using that track there. And we've got a um, mud um, scraper. It's got a correct name. I can't remember, unfortunately. It's in the book, which I don't have to hand. But it's for... It's basically just gets rid of the mud. It just pushes it off out of the track run. As the track comes back up around that sprocket, the mud falls and slides off so it doesn't get all in and around the running gear. Um, I've chipped some of the foil, uh, which are probably would be mud guards at the front. Um, so we've got to sort that out. And I'm just looking at the stowage now. I'm putting the uh, jerry cans in loose. I've sprayed them up different colours, so different shades of the German grey. A couple in field grey as well, just to give a bit of life to them, really. And I'm just going to paint the tools in with the uh, Tamiya XF85. That's all the metal bits and gun barrels. Got the jack block going on at the at the rear here on these two uh, jerry cans, and I've put it at a jaunty angle, mainly because that was seen in some of the uh, reference pictures, and it adds a bit of interest. That's that's the only reason behind that. And then we've got the spare wheels going on as well, and I've decided that they're just going to sit somewhere along the side fender. These would be drilled for they you know there'd be a hole drilled through this and then a bolt pushed through to secure that on um in real life so they can go all along that fender you can put the clip anywhere because it's only sheet metal they could have done that easily so um again this shows in the reference changes all the way through from um it's different in poland different in france and different when they're going into russia a part of that change of the layout so um they even went in but in between the tracks in between the running gear at one point uh, so you can go whichever way you like um, and then some of this fo foil stowage has just been painted up uh, in khaki colour uh, which is XF49 XF49 in the Tamiya range um, I think I may have painted a couple in the um, desert yellow XF60 as well just again to give me a base colour that changes it up and now you're starting to see the basic layout. This is how the vehicle's going to look. This is where the stowage is. That's how it's going to sit. All the parts are painted in their um, base colours. I've repainted those mud guards now black to get rid of some of the silver that was showing. That's one of the problems of using this foil tape. Uh, it does flake off a little bit and then it obviously shows through as bright silver. That's that side bed roll that's tied in. The idea is it's tied in around the uh, handles of those tools. But for me, it's hiding a uh, area on the model that I got wrong. Um, now, the decals are useless. Um, Academy kits are known for bad decals. This is no exception. As soon as I got them in the water, they just disintegrated. They were unusable. So raiding the um, spares box, I've managed to come up with a 
a number sequence that works. I found um, 315 in some reference. This isn't how it looked, but this is my interpretation of it. Um, so that's what I've done. I've also dropped the turret on the floor and snapped the gun barrel, which was handy. So we've got that to fix as well. This is one of those points in the build when you're starting to think, I've bitten off more than I can chew. It was meant to be a nice straightforward build of a Battle of France vehicle, and before I know it, I'm now in the middle of a Barbarossa vehicle where I've had to add stowage, and um, I've snapped the gun barrel. But it's not a difficult fix. It's one of those things, just if you're not feeling it, you know, walk away for a couple of days, come back, and you'll fix something like this very easily. But if you're in the moment and you want to fix it, for me, what I did here was super glue and lined it up. Uh, I actually put a bit of Tamiya Extra Fin in there as well. I mixed some Tamiya Extra Fin in to make it kind of um, tacky. And then I put super glue in as well and pushed it together. So I haven't done that on film. This is a super glue straight away, but it was very, very brittle. Um, so because of that, I scraped it away again and um, actually put some Tamiya Extra Fin in there as well to get a kind of bulge of plastic with the super glue and then i sand that back so there you can see the great big blob of super glue and that's it now sanded back i do lose a tiny bit of the profile of the barrel but you have to you have to know to look for it you can see it now i've t said just under that bit at the top of the barrel there's a little bit of the gun profile gone you can see where i've sanded a bit that hasn't been sanded on the rest of it but it's you know Considering where we were, I'll uh, I'll live with that. So once you're through that kind of um, part of the build, it's on to the oils. Um, and this is the initial part of weathering. So with the German grey being the main aspect of this, I've put a couple of blue oils in here as well from my cheap set. Got a white and um, a whole load of browns. So I'm just going to leave you with this for a moment because this is rather self-explanatory. And then we'll start getting a little bit muddier. And I'll come back in then.
So, as I said, we're going to make this one a little bit muddier. So the, the weathering that we've done so far is, is more or less in line with what we've done already through the series. Um, but to add a bit of mud in here, I've actually used some of the pigments. Uh, these are just the humbral pigments that I'm trying to use up, actually. Um, and so it's earth colours. And I've mixed them into the odourless thinners to make a kind of liquidy, heavily pigmented liquid base. A heavily pigmented liquid. So where we've already done some heavy washes in there with the oils, that's put that's put the um, initial layer down. So it's all about layering with this. It's all about building up the layers, um, and that's given a bit of randomness, but in and around the back of the running gear. And now we're just gonna add this heavily pigmented liquid mix uh, in and around areas where soil would collect off of the running gear. So you just got to think logically where this is a running gear that has quite a lot of flat spots where stuff would land and, and get stuck. You could even mix in a bit of um, static grass with this as well because that would show up with the churned up soil. That's not really what we're looking at here. I'm thinking long roads, Barbarossa, dusty. So not so much driving through fields, but it obviously did happen. Um, so just working it through there with the initial layers... And um, this is a dark brown, so you can then add in lighter browns, you can add in different colours, you can add oil paint to this to change the shade, and all of that will just add those layers and start to make things look a little bit muddier. And um, now that's on, uh, with the, the wet brush, we now go over with a dry, thick brush, just to move it now, um, and wick off a little bit of extra, where it's, where it's in areas it don't quite want. Um... And this is over, so the, the oil wash that's been put on previous has already had a chance to dry, so it's probably like the next day, if you think of it like that. Um, and that's how we, we go about it. So once that's applied, we just have a think about it, you know, sit there and think, does it look natural? Is it collecting in areas where you think it would? Um, and are you happy with it? And if you are, then you can let it dry. Um, it's not a problem. There's going to be plenty of time to work with it afterwards if we're not happy with it. And um, also something else we're going to do, especially given the way these tracks line up at the uh, rear, is we're going to put some mud splatter on. So um, a simple way of doing this is with our same mix, just using a cocktail stick or a cotton bud, as I've got here handy, just flicking the brush at it. It's very, very messy, so uh, bear that in mind with, with this sort of thing. But I'm just trying to control it down around the tracks and all over the, the bottom um, rear section. I'm not trying to go high and over. It looks like I am, but I'm not. I'm, I'm coming at it from a lower angle. And you can see by the amount that's um, collected on the rear fenders there. And it's very easy to overdo that. So, uh, you know, be careful when you go around certain areas. Now, any um, bits that are collecting on the side of the vehicle or in areas that I don't think look natural, I'm just kind of now wicking off or streaking up or, you know, blending in, really. Now we'll just go in a bit closer. And what I'm trying to show you here is how these small bits of detail all add to tell a, a bigger story. So where we've got a few areas just collecting on that side fender there just a bit of uh, just an oil stain just just there naturally it's somewhere where it would collect and we've got the the mud there coming up the rear fender and it's all just looking very natural uh, where we've got the wash in some of those recessed um, screw heads as well it's all just looks the part and that's what you want to go for that's that's the idea it's not over the top you want some stuff that's very um sort of over accentuated and you want other bits it's maybe a bit understated um and that all comes together to to give a nice feel so the way we picked out these recessed screw heads was just with a pin wash of different colors some washed out some didn't um so went in a bit darker of some areas a bit lighter other areas and that all comes together to to give you a, a really nice feel and you want to remember to bring the turret in when you're doing this as well because you can easily get the hole looking completely 
different to the turret, which is going to, but you, you want to get the blending free. So now you can see the mud effect, and that there's no pigment fixer going on. There's nothing else we've got to do there. You can blend that pigment around with a, a large br dry brush, that is. You don't want to use it with a wet brush. Um, and you can blend that around the running gear if you want to. You can change it. It's, it's very movable. Um, I've put a cover on the uh, light there as well, just something I saw in the uh, reference. Again, looks like there's nothing going on, but as we go in, um, in into detail, you can see every section there's something happening. Um, and that's what you want to aim for. You don't want just a lot of interest in one area and, and not anywhere else. You want to go all over it and um, it needs to look... You know, interesting, which you can do that by having lots of small areas with detail. Now, finally, just to finish off, we're going to go on with some of these pre-made washes from the Ammo range. Uh, so we've got fuel stains, engine grease and engine oil, which stays shiny. We've got some that dry matte with the panel liners, we've got streaking grime. And with all of these, again, we're just going to give that tiny little bit more refinement and add it to all of the layers we've already got there it will bring the model up a little bit and it will start to look really interesting. So this muffler was the thing that was standing out to me that, it, you know, got away with it a little bit. Uh, so I've got the rust effects streaking um, set from Ammo. So I'm just piling that on. I didn't know what I was doing, never used it. I just thought, right, let's see how this goes. So I've plastered it all over the muffler to give us a kind of rusty um, finish. I'm not trying to make it look rusty. That's not the intention. I'm trying to make it look uh, burnt and over the top. Um, Oxidised, I suppose. It's a form of rust, I guess, but I'm not sort of going for rust. I'm going for a very um, overworked muffler, if we think. Um, and that was then wiped back. And again, I'll cut back through that as well. I don't leave it quite as you can see it here. And then I'm just thinking, well, you know, we might have a oil run or a grease run or undone some bolts there and we've had a little bit of a stain run down. So I'm just telling that story there. Uh, I thought that was a little bit thick, so blend that back a bit with the brush as well. We don't quite want it as thick as that. Um, here we go. Just get rid of that a little bit. Just hinting at it. It looks like nothing's there, but when it dries and um, you add a few more layers and as you go on through you'll find that it will really start to um, sell it to you it will sell the idea of what we want to do which is an oil stain there when you apply that over the whole vehicle it really does give quite a nice effect this is all still very basic stuff there's nothing here that you know only certain people can do it's it's just the same as anything else it's just applying the techniques and not even in the right order I, I you know i don't believe that there's an order either i just believe just keep adding layers and it will get better and if it looks too heavy wipe it away if it doesn't look heavy enough add a bit more just keep going like that don't be scared of things um and again it doesn't look like there's a lot going on here but when you when you catch it in the light there's streaks all around the side of this rain marks um, you can see there on this side, hopefully you can catch it. It's not just grey with a little bit of weathering around the bolts. There's runs all the way along here and I'm just going to add a few more. This is what I've been doing, uh, so off camera, you know, I had a tiny bit of enamel wash there. I would have been doing it with oils before. And we just streak it down off of the bolts. So, don't know what it is. A little bit of mud there, then it rains. There we go, that's how it does it. It doesn't mean that that's a... An, an oily bolt, bolt or, you know, fuel stains or anything like that. We're just using these different products to tell whatever story we want to tell, really. Um, again, that's that's another thing to think of. If, you know, if you've got a product that says rust streaks for rust effects, that's not the only thing you can use it for. You could use it down on the running gear to make it look muddy if you wanted to. Um, so... Always be willing to experiment. That's that's one of the biggest things about this hobby. It can be very easy to be scared that we're going to damage something or we're going to make something, you know, ruin something as as we go on. Uh, once you pick up the techniques and you start to learn stuff, you you start to realise that, you know, you can come back from anything. Really, it's very difficult to ruin a model so much that you you know you don't know where to go with it. Granted, sometimes you know some mistakes do create more work than we're perhaps willing to do, but nevertheless, there's always a way around it, and I tend to find 
to be honest, through my mistakes, I find quite a lot of nice techniques, generally, is where I found most of them. Um, in fact, all of this was trying to wipe away um, oil that I didn't want, and it started giving this nice streak of effect. There you can see, hopefully, there's a patina along those flat side areas. It's not just heavy streaking, but there's a whole load of it. It's, and the more you look at it, the more you see it. And it's happening on the top here as well. It's running backwards and running forwards. We've got a little puddle around the uh, cupola there. And on the front plate. And I feel that that's, that's pretty good. That's what I was going for. I, I do, you know, I don't mind this at all. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm reasonably happy with that. And obviously mating it to the uh, hole. We can now look at that and see how the running gear looked. And um, it was at this point, I, you know, I started to feel like we were nearing the end. And that's when you you tend to know that it's probably best to, you know, not add much more. You're pretty good now. Um, just dotting in the odd bit of fuel stain here down on the wheels. Uh, that is where you'll get sort of greasing points, which will uh, leach grease out. Got a bit of a f bit of fluff in there, so we want to get rid of that. And there you go. Hopefully, um, you know you've you've learnt something here, and, and you agree that that's looking pretty good. Um, this is probably the most challenging model we built so far, but um, don't worry, it gets a lot more challenging a lot sooner than I wanted it to with some of my choices. <laughs> Thinking I've um, picked good kits, I've certainly discovered a few kits that you really don't want to messing about with going forward as i say as far as this one's concerned it would probably be better either to um everything i've corrected in this one is included in the bronco kit it's a much better kit a little bit trickier but you know it's a much better kit it's got full interior i think or at least it's got the um fighting compartment so that's something to think about um or look for the cmk kit so that would be my advice on this um, if you do get the Airfix boxing or the Academy boxing, probably then Airfix boxing is, is better again because at least the, the decals will be good. Um, and if you really have to, then, you know, you'll be stuck with the Academy boxing. But it's not a terrible kit. It's, you know, it's just a little bit ropey in places. Uh, so as always, um, this brings this one to an end. So thanks for watching. This brings this um, this little build of our... 35t series to an end as you can see as i mentioned earlier just adding a bit of pencil there to finish off the tracks uh so this is all part of a series that's ongoing of weekly videos uh which is the beginners series to armor modeling and it's something i'm quite passionate about of trying to you know show some very easy techniques i, I we're in a lot of facebook groups and and i see a lot of questions that i am surprised people um, are asking um, so I thought I'd do this series just to put some very basic techniques out there and um, because uh, there's a lot of information out there there's a lot more than when I started um, and it's continually continually being added to uh, but some information seems to be uh, dare I say not quite the right information as far as I'm concerned there's there's other ways to go about it and also other um some of the information is a bit over the top as well. It can look like, the, you know, there's no middle ground. It looks like I'm going to get into armour building and um, you can think, cool, there's a lot I've got to do. You know, I've got to get all this photo etch, metal gun barrels, weld seams, etc. Um, so I'm trying to jump in here somewhere in the middle to think, you know, maybe we don't want to go straight into that if we we're in our first couple of kits um, and build some kits out of the box, really. Um, do a few little additions that we have to here and there. Um, but mainly the ethos is to is to build a kit to the end, get it finished, get it on the uh, shelf and then build another one. And um, that's the whole premise behind it. Uh, so I've got a whole load coming down the uh, line already filmed, ready to go. Some of it, there's a lot of, lot, lot of editing to do, but uh, never mind. It'll all be done. Uh, so as I say, they are weekly videos and they'll be going on for some time yet as I've, I've already got them in the bag. Um, and as we go forward, uh, we will change. So um, there's a couple of things I definitely want to add, which I don't think get added 
enough, you know, British armour. We've got a lot of that coming down the line. Uh, it would have been very easy to jump in on this series and begin with, uh, you know, tigers, panthers, king tigers, so on and so on. So I'm trying to break it up with the German stuff. Um, I know this has been German a couple times now. The last four videos has been German. So don't worry, we've got British is the next subject um, and uh, different scale as well. Little spoiler alert, that's, that's next week. And then we're going to... Um, break it up as we go along. So we've got some Soviet armour coming down the line before we go back into the German stuff. So, uh, as always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Do give the video a like if you are enjoying what you see. Follow the playlist along. Um, you can do that by saving the playlist as well, and uh, then you'll keep up to date. Let me know any comments down below. I'll see you in the next video.